10 points for Man for our following four games, which we'll talk about Unai Emery's kind of overall changing what he's done at Aston Villa over the last, what is it, five months now, four months, whatever it is. We've had the World Cup breaks so that elongates it a bit. It's 14 games he's been in charge in the Premier League, which feel, it feels like longer, but feels like less somehow in this weird kind of topsy-turvy season. And so we'll talk about the kind of overall change, but even just that almost like mini turnaround to, to lose in the manner that we did, to concede four to Leicester, three to Man City and four to Arsenal. Almost to take stock of that and go, right, we're going to stop conceding goals and we're going to start getting points. Since then, a 2-0, a 1-0, a 1-0 and a 3-0 three, three today. I think conceded one goal from the opposition in those four games since. So that almost that four game, well, that seven game period there that I've spoken about is kind of embodies what Unai Emery's done for Villa in his four, five, six months, whatever it's been. It's night, night and day the the job that he's done, and to think that we're, you know, tucked away safe, not only safe, but thinking, you know, how far can we push? Can we can we get a foothold in the top half of the table? And he's done it in a very um, modest and Understated, understated is the word I would say the story this season apart from obviously the big boys in Arsenal and Liverpool not being very good and Chelsea not being very good is Brighton are doing really well Brentford are doing really well and I look at Fulham they were destined to go down and they're doing really well and Aston Villa started poorly and they've got better but now it's like well, we're only just a couple of points behind those sides everyone's raving about but no one's raving about Aston Villa which is absolutely fine by me because I don't want other people looking at us and seeing headlines who know I am we'll be the next Liverpool manager and Ollie Watkins will replace so-and-so at, at this club. I don't want any of that. I want us to kind of do our own business out, out of the way. So the fact that we've kind of almost snuck up on everybody unannounced is testament to firstly how quick how quickly Emery's turned it around. And just that, yeah, just leave us to it. We'll just do our thing. It would be nice to finally get out of 11th one day. We should be looking forward now, thinking, right, we've got 38 now. Can we get to 50? Can we get to 55? What is achievable? Is it just 10th place? Or can we sneak in above Fulham to 7th or 8th? It's surely massive positivity now, no? We're developing a style um, and a philosophy which we know that with a couple of upgrades in a couple of positions that that can take us or hopefully take us beyond where we are. So considering where we were October time and what we thought and the doom and gloom surrounding the club, it's been, you know, it's been a masterstroke appointment and the way he's managed to galvanise the, the dressing room and galvanise the, the, the fan base and do it without really attracting the attention of the wider world. That's fine. That's fine because I'd rather us build gradually. You said something like it was a collective unit that that won the game today. That's what I'm seeing more from Villa at the moment. It's not that we're just going, oh, God, we won today. Grealish was bloody bloody, wasn't he? It's a good job we've got him. Or Benteke. If we hadn't got Benteke, Benteke's goal would have been relegated. Yeah. Obviously, Watkins has scored in recent weeks and uh, Ramsey's chipped in today. McGinn, McGinn's been very good in the last few weeks, even though he's not contributing in terms of goals. But Villa kind of work as a unit now, more so than they have done in the last 10 years I've been supporting Villa, that I can remember the last 15 years, that it's not just a, he's the star player and we'll work around him, or we're going to counter-attack with Gabby and Ashley Young and that's that's the tactic. But it has to be those players for it to work. They know what they're doing together as a unit, They're about the way they move together, the way they press together. Together. I don't know if I'm explaining my point properly that it's not about just a couple of individuals now that you could you could swap Brendier for Duran or whatever in the same position, but it's the, the, all the eleven players working together that yeah, is working it's, for us. It's, it's players knowing the system and being prepared to kind of know what the, the you know you, you're a left back and you look to your your, your left side of centre half and know what he's going to do. You mm. you know that you know it, it, listen, it's it's probably football basics, but it is like you say it's moving as a unit. I thought today was a kind of performance that was like a collection of sevens out of ten basically, which sometimes if you're playing Man, United, Man City, you're playing Arsenal, you're probably going to need a collection of nines to, yeah. to win the game, but sevens was enough, and sevens was enough, but there was a couple of sixes in there. I, th- I think Bailey and, and Buendia weren't that great. You, you could say that Ramsey, you knocked him up one because he was the driving force and he got the, the goal that, that that's clinched it in the end, and you could say Mings, you knocked him one above Conser because he was probably the, the dominant of the two. But mm-hmm. ultimately, that, that game was won because there was a level, there's a consistent level of performance across the yeah. team. Perhaps that's what won it, and that's what got us, broke them down, and, and so the seal broke, and we got the two goals towards the end. Whereas if we'd have forced the issue a bit too bit earlier, like I would have liked old Moni Man sitting in the Trinity, <laughs> maybe it wouldn't have happened like that. Maybe it's mm. that kind of patience, just yeah. keep going, just keep going, be solid, 
And if we don't score the second or third goal, it might it might matter ultimately in the battle for 10th, but it doesn't matter because you've won the game. That's what I mean about it being a training, like, almost like a training thing, that it's like we're going to work out what Aston Villa are and what we're going to try and do, and we're going to use that to die at Villa Park. We're already 1-0 up, we're in control. Bournemouth are going to offer us offer very little going forward. We should be able to handle whatever they've got. So let's go through some phases of play, let's work out what we do. There's a moment where Cash keeps the ball in from going out from a throw-in and he kind of knocks all the way back to the byline and he keeps that in. I think it goes back to Martinez and back to Mings away when we break off the back of it. And it's like, oh, that's what we're trying to do. And we might not have the talent yet to be able to blast away teams and win 3 0 <laughs> against better opposition. Obviously, we've done 3 0 today. But to fly up into the top six like Newcastle have done and be competing for Champions League straight away. But a couple of position changes, a couple of tweaks and personnel over the summer, another pre season, another 10 or so games left in this season as well. We want Villa to come out at the start of next season. And always be around the top eight of the Premier League. Even though we think, oh, it's so, you know, sometimes it, it, we've got to be super patient. And we say that we've normally scored in the first 15. <laughs> Oh, yeah. In the first 15 minutes of games anyway, haven't we? We've not not scored in any games yeah. under Emery yet. We're going out and yeah. trying to force the issue. We're just trying to force it in a controlled manner. Um, mm. Which, again, it's educating us as a fan base, isn't it? And I'm all, I'm all for it because we've scored in every single game. The defensive resilience seems to be becoming in, in recent weeks and recent months. So, you know, what, what's not to like? I was looking at his like, points per game. I was trying to work out before, and it's, I think it's 26 points. I've got, I'm have got. i looking down, well, I've got my phone, my calculator. 26 points in 14 games. So I've got that down as 1.85 points per game, which over the course of a 38-game season is 70.5 points, which I don't know without looking at league tables of years gone by, but I'm pretty sure that's European football standards. That's Champions League pushing standard 70 points, a 70-point season. Now, it's easy to say he's done that over a 14-period game. Can he do it over 38? The kind of optimistic, I love you and I Emery side of me at the moment says, yeah, of course he can do that. We're heading in the right direction, but it's obviously a different matter to actually physically do it. There's points where people are just going, oh, it's just a new manager bounce. He had a couple of good results, but you know, he'll kind of, it'll all level out at some point. It's only Aston Villa. They're not good enough. That They won't be able to achieve anything. To even have sustained the level of performance that he has done over 14 games tells me that he can do it over the course of a season so to have done that so quickly and to get us from what we were under Steven Gerrard where we were going guys without scoring at all without having shots on target at all to now going the complete opposite way and that we're we're scoring every single game we're creating chances it's very very positive isn't it and there's no way and we spoke a few weeks ago about what what Emery can achieve after the halfway point I think we were on 25 points after 19 games and it was still a lot of let's just get to 40 and see what happens and I said I will definitely get 50 points and we're well on course to to get past that so the short-term target is getting to the top half the longer term target is get as many points as for this season as you can and see where it takes you the plan for next season has to be European football. I'm glad you've you've kept yourself in check and just going for European football rather than the 70 points because I've just done a little bit of checking and the the three years that we finished sixth under O'Neill, the most we got was 64. <laughs> so so it's a big ask to get em- Emery to turn us in, in, from relegation threatened um, Aston Villa to to Champions League Aston Villa in one season. But you know, we've got a dream, haven't we? We beat Palace in the previous game at home and we beat Bournemouth fairly comfortably today. And I'm still not. I'm I'm excited about what's to come, but I'm still want more to have better standards as supporters as well. Not to be crossing the far line between cockiness and arrogance, but wanting to achieve more, wanting to be in it together to go. Oh yeah, we've won today, but what about the next one? I'm already thinking, get the international break out of the way. Don't don't care about that. Let's play Chelsea. Let's beat them to get into the top half. Let's demand it. Let's de- mm-hmm. demand it in a patient, supportive, <laughs> yeah. vibrant, excited, <laughs> we're in it together kind of way, which is nice in theory. It's a bit hard when we when we want to be entertained every week. 